I'm Dr. Neil Hammerschlag. I'm a research assistant professor at the University of Miami. I'm also director of their Dunlap Marine Conservation Program. I don't think most people realize that uh, sharks have been on the planet for over 440 million years, about 200 million years before the first dinosaur walked the planet. They've survived all the world's mass extinctions. Today, many of the species, many populations of sharks are in serious decline due to overfishing by humans. Tens of millions of sharks are killed every single year and they're being caught and killed faster than they can reproduce. And this is causing you know, rapid and alarming population declines in many species. And we're not quite sure what some of the ecological impacts of these losses are, but we do know that when you remove large predators from an ecosystem, uh, there can be these trickle-down or cascading effects to other community members that can even impact the whole landscape. We're doing ongoing shark satellite tracking work, and that's to examine their uh, long-term movements to identify key habitats that are important for their you know, life history, like identifying their mating grounds or pupping grounds or areas that they like to aggregate to feed or their migration routes. Uh, we take a variety of different tissue samples from the sharks uh, when we're working with them before releasing them. Uh, this includes muscle biopsies, fin clips, and uh, blood samples. And we use this to do a variety of different tests. Um, we look to see the concentration of toxins in their tissues. This has both implications for shark health, but also potentially for humans who consume sharks. And we've even found that their fins contain a uh, neurological toxin that's been linked with Alzheimer's. Uh, we can get an idea of what their diet is based on the different uh, chemical signatures in their tissue types. And this way we don't have to kill them to get an idea of what they're feeding on. We can just take a little non-invasive, non-lethal you know, biopsy. Uh, from the blood we can tell whether the sharks are mature, and in the case of females, if they're pregnant. So when you add this to our satellite tagging data, we're able to hopefully get an understanding of where these animals go to feed, or where they might go to give birth, uh, or you know, uh, get a little bit more about where they might be picking up uh, and feeding, getting different levels of, of toxins. For those of you who are interested in getting involved with what we do, uh, check out our website, sharktagging.com, or our Facebook page, you know, Facebook backslash sharktagging. And uh, there's, there's different things that people can do. One, uh, we offer a citizen science program where people can come uh, from the public to join us on a shark tagging trip or a shark research trip here in the Florida Keys or the Bahamas or South Africa, where people pay to cover their way and help offset some of the costs of our trip. Uh, they can also certainly donate to support some of the educational and research programs we're doing. And we even offer an adopt a shark program where people from the public can pay for a satellite tag, uh, donate to pay for a satellite tag. Uh, we then tag the shark and we upload that data online so people can follow along through an interactive Google Earth map and the new adopted parents can name the shark and put up a whole story and literally track their shark. You know, over the years I've gotten to study many sharks in different areas and um, it's pretty amazing that some sharks have individual personalities and you know I'd been doing work off South Africa for you know over a decade and in the winter time I would go there with with our team and every year we would see this same shark come to the boat uh, that would come for pretty much the same week year after year and we saw her this shark grow from you know over seven feet to, to just over 18 feet long and it's pretty amazing because she had this unique personality that she would always lift her head up out of the water and look at the people in the boat and circle the boat with her head out of the water. And, you know, we could easily identify this shark just based on her behavior of, of swimming around the boat with, you know, with her head out of the water, kind of smiling at everybody. You know, we're always learning new things through the work we're doing, especially the satellite tracking work. Uh, one of the coolest things I saw was a shark that we tagged uh, off the Bahamas at a site, uh, moved out into the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, spent seven months out there, 
uh, circled an area the size of one billion football fields, and then came back you know, over half a year later, later to the exact same spot that we originally tagged it. So these animals are, are always impressing us and we're learning new things all the time. Special thanks to Dr. Neil Hammerschlag. For more information, check out the links in this video's description. I'm E. Fish, and thanks for watching Aquaparel TV.